Hey everyone, Darren Connell here. Let me get my coffee out of the way. Welcome back to my studio. Um, Kylo Ren. That's what we're doing. That's what we're going to get done. So, we are working on little Kylo. Um, I will bring the camera in. We might as well get straight back into it. Um, and we, we will carry on with the face. We were doing extra layers of colors and the shades last time. We're going to carry on with more of that. Um, I've got some pictures up on my screens. Maybe do some work around his eyes. Maybe some general skin color. We'll just work on some different things and see what looks like it needs some work doing to it. And that's what we'll do. So I'll pull this camera in. It should be in the right place, roughly. We'll see. Um, let me turn the brightness of that main camera down though because when I bring this in this this light just shines on me and makes me look like I'm glowing or something so I darken that then change to the overhead with me in the corner down here and if I'm working on there that looks about right doesn't it if I want to do a close-up I can lift it up I think that's okay let's get some work done so we got Kylo Ren. In fact, let me just one second make this preview image on my screen a bit bigger so I can see a bit better what you're seeing. Now, on my preview image, he looks a bit pale and ghostly there. He doesn't look like that to me so much in person, but I can see that I would probably want to give him a bit more of a tan. He looks better in person than he does on my preview screen. You might have a more accurate image on your screen. But I can see you want to make him a little bit more tanned. But he's starting to get the colours. The shades around the edges of his nose. The tip of his nose. In his eye sockets. His lips. His cheeks. All of that is starting to be lifted up now. And, and built up. Um, so I'm going to... Let's open the flow enhancer which I'll put what's that I'm gonna put that over to one side so it's out of the way and I don't knock it over by mistake which I have done plenty of times um, now I can't remember of all these browns which are uh, let's just tilt this up a little bit there's my paint there where was that about there of all the browns that I was using, I can't actually remember which ones were the colours that worked well. That's slightly frustrating. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, where's my palette? I've lost my palette. I was going to mix some colours then. And... Okay, I put my palette all the way over there. Palette. My palette had gone missing. Okay, so I, if I put this hmm, like that, you should be able to see it. So I'm going to... Actually, let me just check first that everything is working. So I'm looking at my screen. Um, yes, it's recording. The music is playing. The microphone is on. Um, okay, I think we're all right. <laughs> I hope. All right, so I've got several browns and several skin colors. Now, I'm still at the stage where I'm learning which ones work well. And I've sort of forgotten what I did last time and what colors I used in the last few. Um, all right, I'm going to do maybe a wash consisting of some beige red and maybe some light brown maybe or maybe medium flesh tone no that's a bit too yellow dark flesh maybe let's get some down and let's have a look now what i should have done before i started this video was actually shake up all the paints because then i wouldn't have to do it by myself on camera which is boring for you lot. Oh, can you see the new thing in my studio? Excellent recording light, which is what I got 
as a present from my wife. And how cool is that? And it's got different things on the front that slide out and you can have one that says recording or you can have one that says on air and there's a blank one I think so you can make your own custom ones. I think that's really cool. And I've basically stuck it to the top of my light box that's got my web address on it just because I think it looks cool. I couldn't think of where else to put it in this, in, in this you know, backdrop behind me and I thought that's excellent and I put it on top and it kept sliding off. So I got some blue tack and just stuck it on there and it's perfect, it works great. Okay, so let's get some skin colour. Every time I shake these up, it acts like it compresses them or something and loads squirts out. So I've got some of that colour there, the beige red, which we discovered was a fairly good approximation of how to start with um, the tanned flesh of previous ones. So I'm going to add a little bit, I think, of light brown to it. Not a lot. So I'm going to put this in a separate one and just put it in with the brush. I'm going to put that over here. Let's get a blob of that out. Because that's too orange by itself and that's a bit too weirdly pink by itself. I think a mixture of the two and then thinned right down might be quite good. What brush do I want? Maybe that one. Maybe that one. Let's use that one. That'll do. Okay, so I'm doing a full wash. What I'm going to do is use some flow enhancer, but not pure flow enhancer because then things get a bit shiny and sticky. So I'm going to use some water as well in there and get a little tiny bit of that. What was it called again? Dark flesh. No, light brown. I can't remember which one I used. Light brown, I think. And mix that in. It's not quite the colour, but maybe if it goes on top, maybe it'll be enough. So let's have a go. Let's have a look at this. I'm going to do just a thin bit first to have a look, see what it looks like, because I don't want to overdo this. Yeah, see, on top of those, that actually look quite yellow. It might... Let's, let's wipe some of that off, just in case, because I think that might be too much. Hmm, let me thin that down even more. Try that again, but even thinner. Ba, 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 ba. Until that dries, that's going to look quite shiny on the camera, so difficult to see. Also, I just went to dry my brush and realised that I hadn't got any kitchen roll out. I'm super professional today. <laughs> oh, I've been out of my studio for a bit. Give me some time to get back into it. Okay. So I'm gonna just try and get some some of that beige red by itself. See if that's any better. Let's 
sorry, holding that up to my face so I could see what I was doing, and it wasn't in front of the camera. Naughty Darren. Dust or something stuck to the brush there. I think it came off the palette. I'll give my palette another clean after this. Okay, when that dries, I think that's going to be all right. Now, I'm not doing anything with the hair yet because I'm still. Working on him, holding him, and that'll end up um, potentially damaging the, the paint job because I'm holding it like this. I can just hold it with a stick, but honestly, it's easier holding the actual thing. Um, I'll tell you what, I can do while I'm waiting for that skin to dry. If I can get some. Uh, plain black. See the neck piece? <laughs> He's shaking around while I'm. I'm gonna let me anchor him on the desk. There you go. See that neck piece underneath? I can paint that flat black while I'm waiting for the um, skin to dry from what I've just done. Might as well use the same brush for that. Let's throw some water on there. Now this is just going to be plain black because that part of his outfit is... I think it's like a shiny leather black. So even though I very, very rarely use black, like actual flat black, it's anytime I'm doing dark things, it's usually dark grey or dark brown or dark blue or something because black Apart from sort of mechanical or artificial things, like plastic things and whatever, in terms of people, which is what I usually paint, black very rarely occurs. Even her, I might use some black very thinly just to add shadows, but I very rarely use black. But this is a very black looking um, part of his outfit. And the fabric, if I was doing the fabric, I would have been doing that um, with greys and dark browns and whatever because the fabric had all kinds of texture on it but this is sort of shiny shiny I think it's leather I need to look I've got one reference picture in front of me on my screen but I don't know how accurate it is but even if I need to adjust it slightly, I'll be able to from this, but I'm pretty sure it does need to be just black. So what I'm doing is just getting the main color on. I will do the neat edge at the top against the skin uh, in a second separately when I'm able to hold the brush steady. But as I'm holding it at the moment, don't want to risk going onto the face so I'm just staying a little bit back from the edge I might need to do a second layer because some of that's gone really thick and some of it is a little bit more watery That'll be fine. Now I think I can use the same brush. Let me... Where's my camera settings? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Show camera settings. Okay, so we want camera... I think that one is called camera one at the moment. Let's have a look. So, advanced... Uh, focus so where are we there you go so I lift the focus up not quite that high about there 
That's about right. Got to make sure where it is so it's on the screen for you. Now, because the first part of the black that I did and the skin um, are both wet, I can't do the normal thing of steadying my brush hand with my finger. I mean, I could do it on the, the hair, I suppose, but that's slightly not in the right place. So I've got to try and be really careful doing this edge. Where's your screen? Sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying super hard to not go over the edge. And what I think I'll need to do is do this really close to the edge now and then when everything's dry I can just go in with a smaller brush and actually do the bit that touches against the skin and just do it a little bit neater and closer and up to the edge in a way that I'm trying to avoid doing right now just in case I cock it up. Which is entirely possible. Who's the hat off the camera again? <laughs> okay, clearly the relaxed position there is not under the camera, so I've got to remember to do that. So let's drop that focus back down. Now, when this is dry and when the face is done, what I will do is get some proper reference pictures that show that part of the outfit and how his neck, because I'm sure it was sort of bands of leather. I think it was the same on his arm. Uh, it was like bands of either shiny leather-like fabric or leather. And imagine like a strips of a bandage, but with black leather. And it was that wrapped around. So I'm sure that comes from his neck around and around and around and around and then turns into that. So what I'll do is I'll get some pictures that show me exactly how that part does look. And if I need to paint some um, fake texture on there to simulate strips of leather or even just give it a bit of, I mean, it, it might be that that's supposed to be super shiny. So I might put some varnish on that. I'll see what the, the actual real thing is supposed to look like. But for now, until everything is dry and when I go back with a small brush and do all that edge that's right up against the skin, and I'll do that really carefully with a tiny little brush and I'll just be holding it right up to my face so I can see what I'm doing and just all of that edge will be painted really carefully but use my finger the way I always do whenever I'm painting something steady like that or something small and detailed and I can't do it on this because I was waiting for that to dry I can show it on the back if I've got a brush uh, let's pretend that's a tiny brush it's not a tiny brush but let's pretend it's a tiny brush if I was painting something on here, super tiny, ideally, I'd be able to just hold it separately and go blink, blink, blink. Now, for most things, you can. But if it's really tiny and detailed, like the sort of thing that normally when I'm painting, without the cameras, when I'm not recording tutorials, I hold things right up in front of my face and really tiny details. But doing things like that freehand at that scale the tiniest wobble and it shows. So I use the little finger on my hand, steady it on the thing that I'm painting. And that allows me to get a much um, more steady positioning um, for whatever I'm painting, as opposed to just holding it where you know both hands are free to move by themselves. Even if I'm leaning against the desk, that steadies it much, much better. But I couldn't do that here because the paint was still wet and I didn't didn't want to mess it up. So I'll neaten that up 
afterwards um, but the black gives me a good idea of okay that's what Kylo Ren's looking like we can imagine the rest of his outfit and that lets me go okay that's what his skin's going to look like it's always good and it's why I paint the hair on things um, or get the the early base layers down even just the way I've done with that and I probably explained it in the previous video painting the dark hair just the dark umber or whatever color it is of the, 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 the base layer of the hair getting that down just gives you a rough idea of what it's going to look like and it the same goes for eyebrows or lips um, faces look different when they have the things that they are sitting next to whether that's skin against eyebrows or hair or in this case a black leather collar thing and it lets you go oh okay that's what is you know it, it's it removes the abstract nature of just seeing some skin painted by itself which is quite difficult to judge you can give it a go and you can get it right most of the time but it's it's always a little bit easier if you can just start to add things that you would see in normal circumstances like dark hair and in Kylo's case a collar okay let me hide that camera settings box because it's in my way now I know I turn my brightness down because I'm under the light here and it makes everything bright but I don't like how dark it looks uh, let's see, camera two, if I set that back to how it was before, oh, that's too bright. No, that is actually my normal setting, that's way too bright, isn't it? You know what, that was actually the right thing to do. <laughs> let's leave it like that. Right, let's see, let's do some colour. I want to add some brownish reddish shading on his cheeks and his forehead and his nose and places so let me have a look at these colors um eeny meeny miny okay so we used some of that ba, 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 ba. we had the light brown which was there now normally if I was using my normal paints these ones that I've used for 12 years I would just know exactly what colors I'm going to and I wouldn't wouldn't even need five seconds I just go oh yeah I need that one and I'd know what I'm doing because I'm using these Vallejo paints now haven't got a clue which ones to use It's a bit too dark, I think. That one's a weird green colour. They're too dark, that's too yellow. Yeah, I think it's this. Okay, let's go back to that beige red. What does tanned flesh look like? Sort of that with a bit of yellow. I'm sure what I added to it last time was, was it sunshine flesh or something? There you go. Sunny skin tone, <laughs> sunshine flesh, as I've just named it. So I added a bit of that to that to make sort of that. I remember now. Now, what I needed to find, and I think I did, but I've for forgotten, for for forgotten, I can't even talk forgotten what I did uh, on the last video wow my hands aren't even working <laughs> should I just abandon this series because <laughs> I'm broken I think um, I've forgotten how I made leather brown I did do it it was one of those mixed with one of those and I got a rough approximation of leather brown not super brilliant but it was sort of close enough let me get a little bit of that sunny skin tone down because having some of the tanned flesh to work with will help because I used to use that a lot not only as the base 
um, first layer that I used to use it as, um, but also going on top with little thin washers all over the place just to add a slightly brownish texture to the skin coloring. Um, I think that's not dark enough. I can't even see that. I'm just messing around with, where's the light? That color there. Just trying to make a slightly darker and more red but also brown color but when I mix them they're always lighter than I think they're going to be what's that one like that's quite orange let's put some of that out oops that needs shaking Are the ones that I've never tried before or haven't for a long time since I painted the lids I've sort of separated and if I don't shake them they just come out as liquid which is rubbish see that's very yellow that's not what I want let's put a bit in anyway <laughs> a bit of random stuff doesn't hurt you know what let's get a bit of red What are the browns? Mahogany brown, flat brown, whole red. I'm sure it was mahogany brown mixed with something made the leather brown. I can't remember. See, I sort of was working on the assumption. I've got red on my thumb now. Sort of working on the assumption that I would remember what I'd done previously and <laughs> I totally can't actually adding that red that's quite good that I like that I like that I do let's thin that right down okay thin it down make it watery okay let's go A little bit of that. Where's my camera? It's a bit yellow. So I might need to darken it up. I just want to see how it looks. Let's put it on and wipe it off. Hmm. Also, this brush carries quite a lot of liquid. So sometimes when I put some on, it comes on thicker than I want it to not thicker um, more liquid and it just sort of spreads around more than I was initially hoping now I've sort of done a all over wash on his face there and now I'm just doing little dabs here and there Let's do the same over here. Actually, I didn't do the wash on that, did I? So I'll get what I've just put on, the, put on there and spread it around. And I can see already it's going on a bit too strong, so I'm just going to wipe off the excess. Let's get some of that stuff. Now, I can see where this is going on and it's sort of creating splodgy patterns against the the red of the cheeks that I'd put on which is good because skin is apart from you know young Brad Pitt or Instagram girls with lots of makeup or something skin is very really very smooth and one color 
I mean, it is on some people, but just not usually. Even the, the people with the most perfect skin usually have different colours and imperfections and everything going on. So the more you can add... Oh, hair cut off the end of my brush. The more random weird stuff you can add, the better. So I'm taking this colour, which you can't really see. Tell you what, let me quickly, before it dries, um, uh, show webcam settings, um, camera one, let's move the focus up. All right, move this focus right up. Now this is sort of impossible for me to paint like this because I can't really see what I'm doing. Is that okay? I'm sort of doing, see I've got to hold the brush up at a weird angle and I can't even see. See those little random, see the skin's shiny so you can't really see it. I'm just doing random little dots, little colours, little bits and pieces all over the place. If you think I do it too heavy, dab them off with my fingertip. Here's the thing. Okay, might be able to see that. So if you do it thin enough, with the paint mixed down watery enough, you can do stuff like that and build up different colours, different shades, darker skin, lighter skin, more red, more brown, more blue or purple, which we all do. And you can build them up and if they are subtle enough, they add a nice um, random textured effect to the colours that you won't get if you just sort of paint it on as a wash or paint it on as even dry brushing which picks out the, the highlights and it's a it's a great way to work if you've got a sculpt that's got lots of texture but it can be quite predictable doing this um, and it only works if you've thinned the, pa the paint down enough otherwise it ends up looking like you've painted loads of spots on the face but if you do it and you get the paint thin enough and you do enough different layers then it's a good way of building it up um, bop, 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 bop. let's see let me throw a little bit of mahogany brown maybe <laughs> I'm not sure let's try mahogany brown I'm gonna drop a tiny little bit there's a thing when you if you're driving in the car and you go over those little mini speed bumps towards a junction where they try and slow you down and there's loads of them. Anytime we go over those, I always sit there and go, ah, like a little child. Because as you go over the bumps, it goes, ah. <laughs> I'm 46 years old. I'm supposed to be a grown up. Okay, so a little bit of mahogany brown. I've just put it on the side there. I'm going to take a small dot of that and mix it in with this colour. I don't want to change it too much. Let's get a bit of red as well. That's quite good, that. That's good. In fact, I'm going to take a little bit more red, a little bit more mahogany brown and darken that up a little bit more. I like that. Ooh, don't go too far, Darren. <laughs> a little bit more red. And a little bit of that 
yellowy, whatever it was, colour. <laughs> Sunny, sunshine, yellow thing. <sighs> what was it called? Sunny skin. I can't even remember which one it was now. There's a few different yellow colours here and I can't remember. Doesn't matter. A bit of something. That'll darken it. The brown and the red. That's a little bit darker. Where's the colour? Where's the light, I mean? That's a little bit darker now. So if I take that, thin it right down, like right down, loads of water, get rid of the excess. How can I do this? Now, forgive me, I'm just having a look here before I go on camera, just so I can see what it's looking like. There's the camera. So I don't want to stick my head under the camera, but I want to be able to see what I'm doing. Now I'm doing sort of almost like just doing a wash everywhere, but I'm leaving gaps. And then I'm going in and just dub 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 dub. And it's like doing a wash, but it's a bit more random. see as I'm looking at it here without looking on the preview screen but looking at it in person that's starting to look a bit more um, skin colored sort of action figure skin colored um, let me get hmm, how, do, how do I want to do this let's get some Let's get some of the the flat red again. Put a little bit of that down. Mix in with that a little bit of grey blue. I want to make a a light purple colour. Oh, excuse me. Weird hiccup burp thing. And I want to mix in. So let's get those two together and put that up here somewhere. Uh, let's get some flow enhancer, a bit of water. You can see that sort of light. I mean, at the moment, it's almost like a lavender colour. I don't want it that light, so I'm going to get some more red. Make it a bit more red, but it's still a bit purple, and I think I'm going to drop in some of that mahogany brown just to darken it up. Maybe, go on, a bit of the skin colour, which has obviously been watered down to buggery, so <laughs> it's not really doing much. But let's get some of that in there. Okay, that's starting to look good. So I'm going to thin that down loads. I'm just bringing it over here to the side so it's closer to the water for a second. Drop some more water on it. Right. Let's chuck that brush in there for now. I'm going to get... What brush do I want? Hmm... 
might do. I wanted a smaller brush that was holding less liquid, and I don't know whether to go for a pointy one or a randomly spiky one. Eeny, meeny, miny. Okay, little sport, small, spi spiky, pointy brush. So I'm going to get some of that purple-ish colour. And I am going to put some... Let's get that out of the way. Up in the corner. Now we've gone onto a different part of the face here and like I said, you don't always have to work on one area. In fact, you know what? Let me try and show you this better. Let me... Um, webcam settings, panel, camera one. So let me bring up the focus a bit better. There's the paint. <laughs> so I'm getting that light purple color and just putting some in the corner of his eyes. Now, this is a completely different area of the skin. We sort of have randomly jumped to it, but that's often what I do. And as usually the way I get the best results, instead of just saying, I'm going to paint his cheeks today and nothing else. If I happen to see a thing where I am looking at part of a face and something is telling me that needs to be a slightly different color. While I see it, as long as it's not interrupting anything else, grab the paint and do that little bit while, you, while you're looking at it, while, you, while it's been drawn to your attention. And doing that, and I'll go from the cheeks to the eyes, to the lips, to the hairline, to the nose, just randomly jumping over the, you know, all over the place, will let you add all of the, the realism that you're after. Couldn't think of the word there. Um, because you're not painting to a formula um, or anything, you're just, ugh, I touched the thing while it was slightly wet and I stuck a bunch of hairs to it. Um, you're not painting to a formula, you're just allowing your painting, where's the focus? The problem is, by holding it so close, it's, the light is reflecting off all the shiny. Um, yeah, allow yourself to jump around. I'll make sure there's no hairs on my finger here. Um, because you will see things as you're working on them. And the more you end up using random colors just to do different things all over the place, the better it's going to look. And I, as I was doing that, just realized, you know what, if I add a bit of purple to that, that's going to look better. So that's what we're doing. Now, one thing I do that not all painters do, um, and it's not technically realistic. I don't think I've talked about it on this series yet. The hairline of, of a head. Um, technically, if you want to be realistic, and it's the way Hot Toys do it, it would just be a smooth transition from the skin color into the dark color of the hair with a bit of faded area sort of along the hairline where the hair is thinner and I do that I have the skin going up into the hair wherever I can but what I also do and it's something that I've done mostly since the beginning I've, I've been doing this for the 12 years I've been doing this and it's not technically accurate you look at photographs you don't see it but for me at this scale it helps I don't know I help paint the shadow 
that you would see around that edge by the you know the sunlight or whatever coming down making that edge a little bit darker and i will paint a bit of that on the skin usually with a red or a ready purple or something and i've just done a bit with the purple that's going to be you know gone over to make it a bit better but you see how the skin up here is a little bit darker now that's what i've just done with the purple and for me doing that and the same goes under the eyes i don't know it just helps you look at photographs of people you won't see that you will see shadow from sunlight and stuff but it doesn't necessarily look like that but it's just how i've always done it and i like it and for me it works well my studio must be really dusty or something because i'm getting tiny hairs everywhere this is very bad maybe i need to clean my palette as well okay so let's get a bit more of that because that's dried now up in the corner i'm going to need a few extra layers up here and it's a bit it could be blended a bit better but i'm sort of trying to do it on camera and it's a little bit difficult holding it up like that but i'll i'll pick up some skin color and blend it in later but that purple stuff you look at people's eyes you will see either a brownish color or a purplish color up under their eyes there and coming down here as well there'll be like a a, a brownish color around the underneath bag and also a purplish color coming down here so i always make sure to add that you don't want it to be too strong because then it looks like they haven't slept for a week and sometimes and i might have done it here if you add too much then what you have to do is go back with a bit of the skin color on top and just help it out a little bit i just want to add a little bit let me get some of that red with that purple just to make a slightly different color and i just want to do sorry i forgot that i'd change the focus for you a bit more under the nose here but not too heavy so I'm just taking a little bit off of my fingertip and not my camera screen so I've just got the the purple color with a bit of the red mixed in there's not much of it on the brush but there's enough to make a difference That nose definitely does need toning back down towards the skin colour because that's gone too dark and purpley there. Also, where are these hairs coming from? <laughs> I need to clean my palette and probably my studio. normal level where I can see it and also the light isn't shining on it so much
Okay, that's okay so far. We'll do a little bit more before we finish up. Um, what do I want to do? Let's see. I'm going to get some red. Still got a little bit left that's not dry yet. Um, let's get some of that beige red. Mix it in with the red. In fact, let's change the red. Let's go with the vermilion, just so we're not using all one colour. Just put a tiny drop down. Add a little bit of that. So what I'm doing is this bit here. Oops, <laughs> the purple's running down, but we're going to be all right. So I'm going to get some of that red. I've been mixing that in there, and I had some of the was it that one? I can't remember now. The skin colour. Just trying to make a... A colour that's not completely red. And it's not really the skin colour either. It's just a sort of... Bit more red... Version of it. Let's chuck a load of water on there. Let's chuck a load of water in there. Right, let's give that a go. Just wiping my brush. Alright, so picking up a little bit of that ready, that colour there. Pinky ready skin colour that I've just mixed. Um, Let's see, where's my focus? About there. I'm just looking at the head, in this case I'm doing the forehead, and I'm just using my eye to see, okay, where do I think maybe it would benefit if it had a bit of this colour on it? And it's a very, at the moment I'm not working specifically to the reference pictures, although I, I do always look at them. And, you know, I've just looked up now. As I said that, I actually looked up at them. But a lot of it is just looking at the head, going by your memory of maybe what that person looks like or maybe just what a person in general looks like. And if you think, you know what, I think that bit maybe could be a little bit more red or that bit could benefit from a bit of purple or whatever it is, then... Thin it down, put some on. If it's not right, you can fix it. There's no mistakes. There's no things that you can do that will completely break the head and you'll never be able to come back. If you're working with thin paint and you're doing thin layers, so you're not getting any big th thick brush strokes and you're not blocking up any details of the sculpt or anything, if you do something and it doesn't look perfect, then either while it's still wet you can probably go back in with some water and, and rub it off that would work if the stuff underneath it is dry enough um or let it dry get some of the color that was underneath and just go over it you can't damage anything it's just a bit of paint and sometimes you'll do a thing and you'll at first you think oh no that's wrong i don't want that to be like that and then you'll paint it or you'll, you know, it'll be the slightly wrong colour that you, the colour's not exactly what you thought you'd mixed or something. And you think it's all gone wrong. And then you actually do it and you realise, oh God, that actually looks better. And you can have, 
in the words of Bob Ross, you can have happy accidents and sometimes things are made better by accident. Completely by accident and it happens to me all the time. Now, the longer you do it and the more practice you get and the less you change brands of paint so you, that you don't know what you're doing and you essentially have to start from scratch. <laughs> but the more you do it, the the more your happy accidents will be more directed. You know, there'll be things that you've chosen to do as opposed to something gone completely wrong and it happens to work. But that still does happen. Now, what I'm doing at the moment, that lightish, pinkish, skinnish colour, I'm actually really liking that at the moment. So what I've been doing, as I've been talking, is using this little thin brush and just going over the whole thing, randomly, different areas, his ear, his chin, his lips, his nose, all over the place, and just doing little randomly shaped dots just blah 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 all over the place just going by what i think might look good and it already helped a lot i really like how that looks so far i'm just trying to imagine what would it look like with his eyebrows on and with all of his moles painted on and his eyes done and his lips done and that's starting to look really good now when i look at the preview picture on my screen it still looks weirdly ghostly and pale. It doesn't on here to, to my eye. Maybe my screen's wrong or just the preview has weird colours on the thing that I'm recording or maybe it just will only look good when it's all completely done and you know his eyebrows and his eyes and everything else are done. But to me, that's starting to look really good. Maybe it's because of the way I changed my camera and the light is more directly above. So there's no shadows. Like if it was like that and the camera was pointing at it now as I'm looking at it, i am got sort of normal shadows on his face where I can see. And it looks incredibly human. You tilt it like that up at the camera. It's like a picture when someone takes your photo with a flash and it just, it looks horrible. Well, that's, that's Kylo Ren's flash face. <laughs> anyway, so when I tilt it, I can see, and the colours are quite good. I still want them to be a bit more brown, a little bit dark, a bit more brown, a bit more red. Um, but we'll get that done. We'll get there. That's quite good. Okay, I'm going to put this down for, for now, because that's been an hour, pretty much. Pretty much on the button. Let me... Oops, hang on. Remember, Darren, don't swing the camera out the way before you change it back because it makes everyone get motion sickness. I go, wee! <laughs> oh, why am I so dark? What's going on? Um, uh, main camera. Nope. I know what's happening. I'm changing the settings on the wrong camera. I'm changing the settings on that bloody camera. Right. Camera two. So I used to have that one as camera one and something happened and it changed. <sighs> Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna wash this these brushes while I'm talking to you. So that was part four of Kylo Ren. Um, I can't do two things at once. I really can't. Let me do this brush. <sighs> I'm, I'm a professional, honest. Right, so that was part four of Kylo Ren. Um, no drastic changes there, although I look at it and I can see enough subtle changes all over that I can see it's heading in the right direction. And, you know, sometimes when I'm painting a head, it'll be, is that the right plastic thing? I don't know if it is. No, that's the wrong one. I've lost my plastic thing. Anyway, uh, my God, what was I saying? Sometimes when I'm painting a head, um, it might take 12 hours, 16 hours. It might take me like a complete week. 
it depends on the sort of well honestly it just depends how much I struggle with it because sometimes you just randomly struggle with things for no reason sometimes they are just genuinely more difficult to try and get right um, but that one is and I can see the difference from what we started with today it's subtle differences but in the right direction and I am quite happy to do because this is part four but you were still at the beginning of this I think on average my videos are 16 hours of, of, of filming of, of painting um, so several you know videos several hours of small incremental in improvements especially um, ones that give variation and subtle things happening all over the place rather than just painting it with pink and going that's the skin lots of things and just adding those and building it up and building it up and building it up eventually you end up with a really human looking face so that's what this is that's had some good uh, progress today doesn't look massively different if you just sort of look at it quickly you think well that's what it looked like at the start because you know like paint that black thing that's a big noticeable difference do loads of things to the skin doesn't stand out a load but if you know what you're looking for you do all of that you do enough of those and then you do the eyebrows and then you do the eyes and the eyes are a thing by themselves but you do that and then you do the lips and then you we've still got to do all the flicking you for those who don't know you will learn about flicking and then we'd be painting his moulds on and you add all those things and all of a sudden you got Kylo Ren looking at you scaring the shit out of you so that was part four um, I will see you in part five thanks for sticking around um, I'm, I'm putting this on top of Kylo to protect him from dust clearly there's dust somewhere in this studio at some point I think I need to empty all of this out <laughs> just dust the whole room it might just be this it might just be that needs cleaner um because it was left out and i've probably not wiped all the dust off so i'll clean that between videos um we'll come back in part five and we will do we'll do the same thing we'll carry on and we'll just be looking at it and figuring out oh look there's a bit that that should be more brown that bit should, should be more blue and we'll just go boom, 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 boom. and at some point we'll decide to do his eyes or we'll decide to we go into doing the flicking and for those who've never learnt about that we'll teach you about how to do flicking to give even more variation to the skin um, and we'll do all that in part five so go away I'm gonna go and make some, some coffee and have something to eat you do the same um, have a good day have a good evening or weekend or week or whenever you're watching this uh, I will see you for the next time I've just realized I've got to make sure my cursor is in the right place there you go um and i'll see you next time that's it I'm, i keep on saying the same thing again go away <laughs> see you soon bye bye